oui. <rire> en 88, on aime s'amuser. S'ils avaient raison d'exprimer leur colère, seul moyen de se faire entendre aujourd'hui. Tu vas trop loin là Hello and thanks for joining us for our weekly film show. I'm joined on Skype by France 24's film critic Lisa Nesselson. Hello, Lisa. Hello, Eve. Now, the Champs Elysees Film Festival would have been physically taking place now on the famous Paris Street, wouldn't it, if it hadn't been for COVID? Yes, well, you would have had to be uh, not only in Paris, but on the Champs-Élysées to participate. And you'd have to have bought tickets or a pass to see a competitive selection of uh, independent films from France and from the U.S. Now, this entirely online edition is an interesting and I'd say generous hybrid. All of the offerings are now free. You just have to sign up by creating an online account, which is also free. The feature films and shorts are only available if you and your Device are here in France. But the master classes and the musical events, there are several concerts, can be accessed from anywhere on earth. Now, these past few months, various festivals have been experimenting with how to hold a film festival virtually. And an interesting feature here, held over from the real world, is that you sign on at Showtime for the film that you want to see. You hope you can take your virtual seat, but there's a certain number of seats allocated for each showing. And so if all of those seats are full, well, then you can't see that movie. Okay, well, 500 internet viewers got to see the opening night film Jumbo. It's about a woman played by Naomi Merlant, the painter in Portrait of a Lady on Fire, who falls in love with an amusement park ride. Literally. Let's take a look. Je t'ai pas vu à la présentation d'équipe. Tout le monde me connaît ici, je viens depuis que je suis toute petite. Il y a quelqu'un Well, that was from Jumbo, which will be in French theatres on July the 1st. Lisa, what else are you looking forward to? Oh, well, a documentary about the Johnny Halliday fans who gather once a month to mourn the French singer at one of Paris's most prominent churches, the Madeleine. Now, the level of national grief when he died was astonishing for a foreigner like yours truly to behold. Uh, and the masterclasses by two talented Englishmen, Edgar Wright and Stephen Frears, both guests of honor. All the films in English will be subtitled in French, and all the films in French will be subtitled in English. There are juries and uh, also an audience prize participants can vote for. By the way, the festival, as I said, is free, but you are encouraged to donate to the nonprofit association called Cinema Portus, Movies for Everybody, which arranges free screenings of worthwhile films that lend themselves to discussion, often sneak previews, for young people all over France, especially in low-income areas where not everybody always has the money to go out to a movie. Um, the um, Cinema Portus people believe that movies are educational and they're a portal into appreciating culture, all kinds of culture, instead of just consuming it. So they go back to 2006 and not only enrich lives, but they teach young people how to behave in movie theaters, which we can all benefit from here in France. Uh, but that's been kind of a lost art in some other countries. Yeah, I feel like that's your favorite thing. You mention it all the time, children behaving in cinemas. Um, speaking of film festivals, the biggest can can't be held this year. You can watch our tribute to the highlights of previous editions on our website, france24.com. Well, the festival director, Terry Fremo, recently announced something called the Can 2020 label. What does it mean? Well, it's a, a seal of approval. Think of it as a virtual red carpet or a celebration for 56 lucky films whittled down from 2,067 submissions. These are the movies that would have made up the official selection if it had taken place under normal conditions. Now, the selection committees never, ever stopped working because they were holding out hope for a physical edition. So that Con 2020 label, and it's an actual logo, means you can tell the world that you're 
your film would have been projected at the 73rd edition of Com, the biggest, most influential film festival on earth. They received films from 147 countries. Now, without a jury or prizes this time, it's a perfectly level playing field. Con will do all they can to support those 56 films as they come out in theaters between now and next autumn, uh, or even premiere at other festivals if they're able to take place. As cinemas reopen worldwide, Con 2020 hopes to organize real screenings in real theaters, maybe even all on the same day at the same time. So what looks good on paper? Ah, well, it's sort of like looking at personal ads and trying to decide whether you'd like to go on a date with a stranger. <laughs> Lots of new talent, <laughs> which is what a festival sets out to discover. But there are definitely some familiar names. Among the top international directors who have been to Cannes at least once, Wes Anderson, who's the French dispatch, was actually shot in France in the city of Angoulême. Let's take a look. Eager to escape a bright future on the Great Plains, Arthur Howitzer Jr. transformed the series of travelogue columns into the French Dispatch, a factual weekly report on the subjects of world politics, the arts, high and low, and diverse stories of human interest. You don't think it's almost too seedy this time? No, I don't. For decent people. It's supposed to be charming. He assembled a team of the best expatriate journalists of his time, Berenson, Sazerac, Kremens, Roebuck Wright. These were his people. Just try to make it sound like you wrote it that way on purpose. And also among the familiar names, there's Francis François Ozon with Été 85, Summer of 85, which will come out in French theaters on July 15th, uh, just a few weeks after cinemas reopen. And the UK's Steve McQueen with two films addressing the black experience in the UK. McQueen won the Camera Door in Cannes for his first film, Hunger, before going on to make 12 Years a Slave. Jonathan Nossiter with Last Words, which is about the end of the world. Uh, Fremo said it's so topical that he could have written it last month and shot it in the last two weeks. Many, many films by first-time directors, including several actors, such as uh, Viggo Mortensen and Samir Guzmi, five comedies for an event that programs funny films relatively seldom, or at least you weren't meant to laugh at them, uh, four animated features and more films directed by women than ever before. Uh, oddly, the very same day the selection was announced, American film site IndieWire declared that there aren't many Oscar contenders on the list before anybody has seen any of the movies. And to me, that's like looking at a newborn baby and saying, well, obviously, she'll never win the Nobel Prize. Well, that's the lineup for the Cannes Film Festival, which won't physically take place this year. Next, the killing of George Floyd by a policeman has inspired massive protests across the US and the world, including here in France. The police drama Le Miserable just came out here on DVD. It's as topical as it can be. Tell us more. While the phenomenal success of this film is a magnificent argument for sticking to your guns, that's a figure of speech, but not entirely. Uh, Co-writer director Lodge Lee is a self-taught born filmmaker. He's founded a school in the low-income suburbs just outside Paris to familiarize young people with the basics of filmmaking and storytelling, and it is thriving. Now, this movie, inspired by events from Lee's own life, won the jury prize in Cannes last year, represented France at the Oscars, and sold two million tickets here in France. But keep in mind, nobody wanted to fund it. Nobody wanted to help get this film made. Uh, potential investors said, well, does it have to be too violent? Couldn't you write some roles for women and other objections? OK, well, let's take a look at Les Miserables. Here is our life. You, you debark, we have been 10 years here. On est les seuls à se faire respecter. Eh hey, les gars, les gars, ils se lèvent, ils se lèvent. Ceux qui te respectent, tu me parles. Les gens d'ici, ils ont peur de vous, c'est tout. C'est quoi les chats Quand t'as volé un lion Ouais. Mais la pression sur les petits, faut qu'on retrouve le lion. Arrête-toi là Bouge pas, arrête-toi Vous n'éviterez pas la colère et les cris. 
Well, with two young, ambitious, independent producers, they got it made, as you could see. It's an intense portrait of three cops, two white and one black, who patrol a neighborhood with limited resources, but many different racial and uh, religious communities. Now, when a policeman uses excessive force and ends up injuring a child, the drone video of what happened ends up as a bargaining chip. It's summer, it's hot, and the disenfranchised are tired of being pushed around. You definitely ask yourself what you would would do under the same circumstances. Okay, the Miserable, definitely worth watching. Now, creative people, including Steven Soderbergh, have shot feature films entirely via mobile phone. One of the best known French film directors, Claude Lelouch, recently made a film in 13 days with a phone, and it's premiering on French subscription channel Canal Plus this week. Tell us more, Lisa. Well, Claude Lelouch is 82 and has never stopped making movies for over 60 years. If you think of an award, he's probably won it, including Oscars and the Palme d'Or for A Man and a Woman. Now, when he started out, you needed lots and lots of equipment, and you had to load film into a heavy camera made out of metal, and you had to take out the film and take it to the lab and develop it with chemicals. He always dreamed of being untethered from the technical demands to just concentrate on the actors and the story and the ceremony serendipity of a film set. The modern cell phone is a dream come true. He's already made another film since uh, this one using real film equipment, I presume, and he's hard at work on the next. His work ethic, creativity, and enthusiasm are contagious, and actors love to work with him. Now, The Dance of Chance starts with a four-minute long musical number, dozens of happy people dancing and singing the title song in the city of Bone to celebrate the winemaking season. And then, tragedy strikes. Now, we had four minutes as viewers to notice details which the swirling camera was showing us, but did we notice? The story follows several interlocking stories. It is Lelouch's philosophy that something good inevitably comes out of something bad. And he piles on the examples as shot by Lelouch, assisted by apprentices in filmmaking at a workshop held there in Bone. The result is surprisingly engaging, despite the occasional clunky moment or song. But I think I'll remember several of these characters, especially the little dog. Okay, Lisa, okay. thank you so Lisa. much for joining us. We're going to leave you with a glimpse of La Vertu des Imponderables by Claude Lelouch. Thanks, everyone at home. Stay safe. See you next time. France 24, every art form. Liberté, égalité, actualité.